Hi, it's Kelly here. You all have been asking me how I fared through the storms. I wanted to give you an update on that, as well as how the energizers and the ceiling fans worked in affecting the storm. Uh, as you can see, I'm here, and we had, th there was almost nothing. I mean, we had a tremendous amount of rain. It came straight down. There, I didn't see the trees, the branches on the trees swaying at all. Didn't hear even the faintest rumble of thunder or see any lightning. The wind was most of the day around 10, 12, maybe 14 miles an hour, which is a nice breeze. Um, and so that's that. Uh, now, as far as Florida and the tornadoes, there were quite a number of tornadoes that were predicted and warnings came out, tornado warning, and tornado warning means there's going to be a tornado at a particular location that's, that's building up. And it turned out that not one of them came to fruition in the entire state of Florida. No confirmed tornadoes. Um, now, as you go up, it, it, when it made landfall, that would be almost east of me. So it had been south, and then, of course, it got to be southeast and then east. And that's about the time I was going to bed. And so by the time it got into Georgia, that's a little bit northeast of me, and then, and then even north because of the storm turned that way. Um, and so they had tornadoes in Georgia. They had tornadoes in, uh, I believe, South Carolina, North Carolina, like that, because I didn't get up every hour to, to readjust the, the direction of the heartfelt energizers. <clears throat> One other thing, oh, by the way, the, uh, the energizers, my five or six years of experience, it doesn't seem to reduce the amount of rainfall. So the only way to prevent these things from causing flooding like this is, is to have the storm die out in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and in fact, you know, we did reduce the storm some. There, there are organizations that, that uh, specialize just in, in predicting the speed of the storm. And it was, those folks predicted it was going to be 182 miles an hour. And it, the conditions were ideal for it because there was no wind shear in the beginning and not very much coming up. It kept increasing, and that's what we do. We, we increase the, the wind shear. Uh, and the eye became, was ragged and, and elliptical and things like that. That slows the storm down because the more pinpoint it can be, the faster it can go. So we slow it down. So we just need to get more heartfelt energizers and more uh, ceiling fans that are loaded up with uh, doubled over twisted copper wire taped down on, on the top side. So we, if we do that, then we can prevent things like what happened in Asheville, where the people are still you know, without electricity, of course, and they're without even water and, and uh, you know, refrigeration, that sort of thing. You know, some people there might have babies. I'm sure some people do. Uh, or elderly people, people, you know, just people who have special needs, extra needs. Everybody needs water. And I, get, I think the road got washed out. Maybe there's a bridge there. I'm not sure. But nobody can get in or out. So it's really a disaster. So we want to, next time, uh, you know, have more going. And there's one coming in another, they don't know yet, a week, two weeks, I'm not sure. Starting from the same place Helene started from. And it's got clear sailing, it looks like, you know, for wherever it's going to make landfall. So let's get those uh, ceiling fans working, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and so we can save people's lives. And a lot of people have died in this storm. I heard it was well over 100 now. And in North Carolina, there's 600 people still missing or unaccounted for. So let's do what we can, do everything we can and do it right now so that we can avoid these sorts of things in the future. Will you take care and God bless.